Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about the project Rock, Paper, Scissors of the Odin project. Basically in this project we're going to focus more on JavaScript, okay, the main things that we need to learn about JavaScript and we're not going to focus too much on HTML and CSS. Actually we're going to focus in anything about this, only JavaScript, okay? So if you would like to have full support from a programming expert, check the description below, alright? Now, every time we're working with a new project we need to create the report so here I'm gonna click in new in my github here I'm gonna put odin dash rock for example okay you can add a description and here is the readme file now I'm gonna put project rock paper and scissors okay and here I'm gonna click in create repository great remember if we want to clone this in our co in our computer we need to click in here in this SSH open up VS code and here we're gonna do git clone and paste the thing that we copy okay and once we take a look now we have here Odin rock okay so right now it's empty but we're gonna start adding things okay so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a file called index.html okay and I'm gonna create a file called touch index.js okay and we have these two files all right here they are telling us that we need in the project that we need we're only gonna work with the console of our page so the the best way is to create a blank html document with a script tag okay so we're gonna create a basic html file html and here in the head i'm gonna have the title oops I put here in uppercase title, I'm going to put rock, paper, and scissors. And I'm going to create the script tag, okay, that we're going to link with our index.js. So here we need to say the source, index.js okay and that's it if we save this is it that we need for here okay in the index.js i want to check if it's working so here i'm going to do a console.log hi and we can test if this project is working so far so i'm going to open up the page and i'll be right back So now like we can see here, I open it up the index.html, okay, we're not going to work with this anymore. And we can see here in the console.log that we have the high, okay? So now we're going to start working with the project. Basically in here, what is the goal of this project? We're going to we're going to play rock paper and scissors against the computer and uh, we need to get the computer choice, we're going to get the player choice and we're going to play around, okay? And we're going to count how many points we got in the game. We're going to have 5 rounds and we're going to store or our score and those things okay so the first thing we need to do is the get computer choice so I'm gonna create a, a list here an array called choices options so this will be all the options we have available okay so we can have rock paper or scissors scissors okay these are the options that we have then I'm gonna create the function so we do function get computer choice and this function we have no parameters okay and right now i'm gonna do console.log computer because i want to see if it's working computer okay and i'm gonna call the function get computer choice so let's see if it's working if i refresh in here so you have to do command shift r or control shift r and here we're calling the function get computer choice and it's getting okay so now we need to get the choice of the computer using something that will make it random, a random choice, okay? So how can we do this? If you search for W3Schools, that is a really good resource, we can use this math.render that will return a random number between 0 and 1, okay? This random here it's going to return a number from 0 and 1 and we can pick one of the elements that we have in our array in our options here okay so we need to do a math so what will be the math in here we want to select i'm going to create a variable here called const choice okay 
and I want to select one element in our arrays list, okay? So I'm going to call the arrays here, the array options, and we're going to use this math random, not the math floor, the math random. So this math random will return a number between zero and one, okay? But in our case, we have three elements, right? So we're gonna multiply by the number of elements, the length of this array. So we're gonna do math.random, okay? I'm gonna put everything here in a parenthesis, math.random times the length of options. So we're gonna do options.length, okay? It will give us the length of this list. So basically it will, uh, it will choose a number between 0 and 1, for example 0 0.5 times the length of the options list, so 0 0.5 times 3, it will be 2, okay? It will be 1.5 actually, so 0 0.5 times 3, it will be 1.5, but we don't have an element 1.5, so we need to use this math floor that will give a number let's see here so the math floor rounds a number down to the nearest integer so for example here we have 0 0.60 it will become 0 0 uh, 5.1 it will become 5 so we're gonna use this math floor to give this random number and it will round okay so we're gonna say here math floor and we're gonna round all right, this is it that we have in here. So this is exactly what we're gonna do. Let's see what we're getting, okay? Because I think it's a little bit abstract, right? So we're gonna do console.log choice and let's see what we have in our hands. I'm gonna expand this part. And if I hard refresh in here, it's saying now rock. So we're doing, we're, in every time we're refreshing here, it will give us a different choice, okay? For our list in here. Do you see rock, paper, paper, Per rock so it will generate a random choice in here so instead of co do console.log here we're gonna return okay choice so we want to return what is the choice that the user did okay so far so good let me remove I'm gonna let this in here now let's see the next step so now here they are telling us to not do console.log but returning so we're returning the expected output okay now we're gonna write a function that plays a single round of rock paper and scissors so basically here we're gonna create now a function that will play the round so here function and will be play round for example and we're gonna receive the player selection and the computer selection so here we're gonna receive the player choice and the computer choice okay and what we have to do we have to now check when we beats uh when who okay who we beats at the same at each time so to check who is the winner i'm gonna create a function here saying check winner for example and i want to send the player selection and the computer selection and what i'm going to do in here i want to check if we have a tie or if someone wins our game so how can we have a tie if both of the players put the same thing right if we both put rock scissor or paper so we're gonna do if player selection is equals to computer selection we want to return that it's a tie right else if so what is our next case we want to check the cases where the player wins so if player selection is equals equals rock so basically rock wins when so rock will always wins when we have a scissor so here we're gonna have computer selection equals equals scissor okay what is our other options or our player selection is equals equals scissor for example and so if we put scissor the computer will lost will lose when we put paper Okay, so here computer selection will be equals to paper. Or the third and last case, if the player selection it's equals equals to paper, we win when paper when the other one has rock. So here we're gonna say computer selection equals equals rock. So if we have this case, this means that the player is winning. So we're gonna return player, okay, and the else. This means that who is winning is the computer. So we're gonna return computer, okay? So the good thing about this other function is that we're checking if it's a tie, if the player is winning or the computer. And here in the play round, we can just check, we're, we can call this function and we'll check what is the return. So I'm gonna create a variable here, const response result, for example. And we're gonna call the function 
check winner and we're gonna pay, pass the player selection and the computer selection, okay? Then we're gonna check what is the result. So if result is equals equals tie, what message we have to return here? So if it's a tie, we can say it's a tie. For example, we're gonna return it's a tie. No one, just it's a tie, you can check. Else if return result is equals equals player. So this means that the player won. So here we're gonna say you won, blah, blah, blah. So here we're gonna say return, you won, you win, you win. And we can say this, paper beats rock. So how can we display what the player select, what is the player selection or not? Here we can use back ticks, okay? And the back ticks will allow us to use parameters. So we can use variables in here. Do you see that even change the color? So I want to say that player selection, player selection wins beats here. And we use again this notation, the computer selection. Okay. So this way we're saying you win rock beats scissors, for example. And the else, if the computer wins, we're going to return you lost, you lose. And we're gonna say the same thing, but now the other way around. So computer selection beats player selection. So here we're gonna say computer selection beats player selection, okay? So basically this way we're checking, we're checking who wins each round, all right? This part of the variation we're gonna see in a bit, but now let's practice a little bit with this case. Let's try it out with this that we're seeing right now. I'm gonna create a variable called player selection and I'm gonna say rock. I'm gonna create a variable called computer selection. We're checking this important notice here. The computer selection, I'm gonna use the function we just made, the get computer choice. So get computer choice. And I'm gonna do console.log calling this function play round. So in the play round, I wanna check who wins. I wanna check if it's working. So we have to pass the two parameters, computer selection, okay? So let's try it out. If I refresh in here, it's saying it's a tie. And why is that? Because if we take a look, player selection is rock and we can use a console.log in here to check, console.log in here to check what is choice. So what we can do in here, if I refresh. Here, the computer choice is scissor and the player choice is rocks. So rocks beats scissors, so we win because we are the player. So rocks beats scissor, and we're saying this message. If I refresh, we are rock and computer is paper. So here saying you lose, paper beats rock, okay? And we can keep playing until we have a tie. So the computer choice is rock and we have rock, our choice is rock. So rock and rock, it's a tie, okay? So basically the computer, the play round is working. Now let's work with the next part. So now in the next part, we need to create a, a function called game and we're gonna call the play round function instead of this one to play five round games. So basically we're gonna use loop, like we can see in here, for i equals to zero, i less than five, i plus plus. So basically in a loop, we will always keep, uh, for example, in this case, where we'll be changing the value of i in each iteration, okay? And we're gonna change the value of i until i is less than five. So we're gonna have at the first iteration, i equals to zero in the second iteration, i equals to one in the third iteration, i equals to true in the fourth iteration, i equals to three, and in the last iteration, i equals to four. And then we don't loop anymore. In every iteration, we can call the play around function. And in every iteration, we can keep track of who is winning for each round, okay? So this will be exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're just using the knowledge that we learned during the class. So now we're gonna create a function game, okay? This is how they're calling here, game. And we're gonna use this for loop, okay? So you can copy this for loop and we're gonna use in our code. So we're gonna do five loops, okay? And what we're gonna do in each loop, we can prompt a message saying console.log. For example, before the loop, we can display a message saying, we can use console.log. Should say, welcome, I don't know, okay? And in here, we're going to ask the user for, uh, the player for a, a game, okay? So for example here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say const player choice, actually player selection 
And here I'm gonna say rock right now, okay? But then we need a const computer selection and I'm gonna call the function get computer choice. So in every iteration, we're gonna ask what is the choice of the computer. Then we're going to make here we're going to call the function play round because the play round will tell us if we lose or if we win. So here I'm going to call the function play round and I have to pass the player selection and the computer selection. So this is exactly what we had before. Okay, but now inside of a loop. So let's see in here. If I refresh, I have to call the, the function game. Okay, and if I refresh, here we have welcome paper rock paper rock. So here actually I need to console.log, okay, I forgot, otherwise it won't display, and I will remove this console.log in here, all right. So what are we gonna do? Now if I refresh again, we're gonna see welcome, it's a tie, so in the first case, probably, not probably, in the first case, computer selection was rock, so it was a tie with our player selection rock, then we lose because paper beats rock, then it's a tie again, then we won because rock beats scissor, and finally we had another tie. So it's working our game, now we have to find a way of getting the input from the player. Okay, so how can we do this? Basically in here they're telling us to use prompt to get input from the user. So here this is the prompt thing, okay? I'm gonna create a function called get function, get player choice okay it will be pretty similar to our function computer choice not pretty similar but it's the same idea so basically in this get player choice we're going to do a loop and we're gonna keep asking the user for a uh, input if the user doesn't give us a correct input we're gonna ask again but if the user give us a correct input we're gonna stop and continue okay so i'm gonna create a variable let validated input and i'm gonna set here equals to false okay and to do a loop i'm gonna say while validate input equals equals false so while this statement is true, while the validate input is still false, we're gonna keep looping. And what I wanna do, I wanna create a variable called choice, and I'm gonna ask the user for this choice, so we're gonna use this prompt. And here I'm gonna say rock, paper, or scissors, okay? Then we need to check if the user gave us something, if it's not empty, the input. So to check if it's empty, we're gonna say if choice equals equals no. So if it's empty, we're gonna say continue because this continue means that we're gonna loop again. We're gonna do another loop. At, so we're gonna ask again the user for an input. Otherwise, if the user type in uh, something, it's not empty, we're gonna convert this choice into all lowercase. So if the user prompt rock all uppercase, we're gonna convert everything to lowercase because it's easier to check with our options list, okay? That's now we need to validate to check if the user gave us a validate choice, if it, the user gave us rock, paper, or scissor, or if the user gave us something else. So here I'm gonna create a constant called choice in lower, okay? And to do this, we're going to call, we're gonna use the variable choice, but how can we convert into lowercase? Here we have this function, to lowercase and basically the to lowercase will get the variable hello world that is all upper and when we use here to lowercase now it's all lowercase okay so we can use the to lowercase that will convert everything in lowercase all right so once we convert everything in lowercase now we need to check if this choice is in our options list so if the choice exists if the choice is a rock a paper or a scissors okay and how can we do this we're going to use the javascript array includes so basically how it works here we have a list called banana orange and apple okay and let me just I want to show you. So here we have the list apple, banana, orange, apple, and mango. And when we use includes, it will check if the word mango exists in our list. Since it exists, it will return us true. If it doesn't exist, it will return us false. Okay, so this is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna say if options.includes this function choice in lower, so if this is true, this means that our validated input is equals to now it will become true so we're gonna stop our loop and we will return the choice in lowercase 
okay this is what we have to do and in here we're gonna call the function get player choice okay so now this is pretty much what we need so let's check if i refresh in here now it's asking rock paper and scissors if i put here if i don't put anything i click enter it will ask us again because we put here choice equals equals no continue so anytime we click enter and we're putting in nothing it will ask again if I put here Giovanna, it will ask us again because Giovanna, it's, it doesn't exist in the options. It only exists rock, paper, and scissors. If I put rock, all uppercase, it will accept. Okay, I want to show you the whole page. It will accept. So here, if you take a look, I put rock and rock bit scissors. So we said rock, our computer chose scissors, so we won. Okay, if I put here rock again oops not in here if i put in here rock again all capital it will understand so now we lose because people beats rock if i put here paper in mixed cases it will understand it's a tie scissors okay and paper paper for example so we finished basically this is basically it that we need so it's working our code now we need to do one extra thing okay we can say in the end of the for loop we can say console.log uh and the end like game over okay and here they are asking us to keep track of the score okay so they are telling us to keep track of the score and reports a winner or a loser at the end okay so how can we do this we're gonna create a variable called const score and we're gonna say equals to zero not const we need to say let because const we can't change the value but let is a variable that we can change the value in every for loop after we finish the round we're gonna call the function play round again uh, check winner sorry and we're gonna check who wants the 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 round so here we're gonna say if check winner and we, we pass the player selection and the computer selection is equal to player this means that the player won the game so we're gonna increase the value of score so we're gonna do a score plus plus all right in the end we can check because we know that we're gonna have five rounds if the score was less than uh here we can say what is this score this is the score for the player so here i'm gonna create score player okay and i'm gonna create a let score computer and i'm gonna say equals to zero here we're gonna check if winner and the else if what will be our else if this check winner return as computer so check winner player selection and computer selection is equals to computer what are we going to do we're gonna say here is not a score anymore here is a score player and here we're gonna say a score computer plus plus okay then we need to check if score player is greater than a score computer this means that we're gonna say console.log player was the winner right because if we have more scores for the player than the computer this means that the player was the winner okay else if the score player was less than the score computer this means that the computer was the winner computer was the winner and the other case so if they are the same so else this means that we have a tie so here we're gonna say we have a tie for example okay and that's it so now let's play a little bit with our code so now let's play around with our code one thing that i want to do is every time we finish the console.log in here i want to do a console.log and i want to create like some spaces to check to say that we are in a different round okay so now let's play around if i put here paper it's saying you lose scissor beats paper so now we're going to a new round if i put here paper again we lose again if i put here rock we lose again if i put here scissors it's a tie and if i put here rock again we lose so it's saying game over computer was the winner so we basically lose four times and we had a tie if we run it again if i put rock so we lose rock we were one rock rock and rock so now we have three two winnings all right two ties and now it's saying game over player was the winner okay so it's basically it that we need to do we just need to worry about the javascript okay so once you finish you just need to uh, submit all of these changes so what you can do here you can click stage all 
you can say start and finish game okay we can commit this file and now we just need to go here to do you see this number two we're going to click in here and we're gonna push to origin okay now if we take a look at our github if we take a look here in our github and we refresh now we have here the start and finish game set up html and css so it make kind of did everything in 35 minutes just to finish you have to go to your settings click in pages and here you have to change the branch to main and save it will appear on your co in, on your computer in 10 one hour so once it's done you have your website for everyone okay so now like we can see in here it's working okay we have here in our github so this is it for our project all right if you enjoyed this content please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you have any questions send here on the comment or you can become one of our students by checking the description below all right and i hope to see you in the next video bye bye if you would like to have full support from programming expert via telegram group and group coaching check the description below